seated. Hallelujah. Ushers, you can serve the people this evening. Hallelujah. Well, go with me tonight to Isaiah 55. And uh, especially on the Sunday nights that I'm here, uh, we'll be looking at this removing the limits. And I'll be dealing with that in the 2 o'clock service. And then, of course, on Sunday mornings, we're going to continue to look at the blessed hope. Uh, but removing the limits. You know, I was praying, asking the Lord what I should be ministering on. And he said to me, he said, to go where you need to go as a body, to do what you need to do, you have to remove the limits. Now, when the Lord first started talking to me about this, you got to understand, I'm, and, and understand why I'm saying this. I'm a big thinker. I mean, I don't think small. It's the Lord, the Lord helped me get over that. But one day I was praying and I, and I was asking the Lord about some things. And he began to show me how small I was thinking. Well, I didn't think I was thinking small, but I was thinking small, and I began to see limits. Now, let me say this before we, well, let's read our verses, and then, I'll, and then we'll, we'll, we'll teach for a while. Verse 7, Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Very important, his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he'll have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, first of all, notice what he says. He doesn't say, I can't think his thoughts. That's what religion will tell you. Oh, the Lord's ways are just past finding out. You know, I mean, I mean, you just can't think like God. Well, that's not what he's saying. He's saying there has to be a forsaking of my thoughts. Let, do you see this? He says, forsake your thoughts. The unrighteous man, his thoughts. For, verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher, my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The higher means more expansive, more lofty, greater, bigger. So what God is saying is if you want to think my thoughts, you got to lose your thoughts. You got to lose the way you think about things, and you got to start thinking the way I think about things. Amen. I mean, think about the way God thinks. This is how God thinks big. A universe that's expanding at 186,000 miles per second. I mean, another 186,000 miles. 186,000 miles. 186,000 miles. Every second. It's how fast light travels, right? 186,000 miles per second. That's how fast the universe is expanding. At any given time, when you look up in the sky, you can only see around 6,000 stars. There are hundreds upon hundreds of billions of them. That's how God thinks. That's, that's God's thinking. Amen. I mean, we think big, and it's big in this temporal climate, this temporal world. But God says, if you want to think my thoughts. In other words, God is never going to bring his thoughts down to your thoughts. You've always got to take your thoughts up to him. Amen. And if I'm going to remove limits, that's what it's going to take. Thinking the way he thinks. How, is, how does he view things? All right? Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1... 2 Peter chapter 1. Notice he says something here. In verse 2. 
grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us. Now, however you do, you're taking notes in your Bible, however you want to do it, notice the word given. Given. He has given unto us. That would be us. That would be faith builders in Little Rock. That would be you, your family. He's given unto us all things. This, this, this phrase, all things, will be very important in this message. All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that's called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the word given, it means to give freely or to grant generously. To give freely or grant generously. So according as His divine power, He hath given freely or granted generously all things. All things. Now here's the limit breaker. Do you know word of faith people can be religious? We can be real religious. And, 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 and here's why. Here's where sometimes our religion comes in. We don't want anybody to know that maybe we're not there. Because, you know, we teach prosperity. And we don't want anybody to ever think we ever go through a financial challenge. You know, we don't want anybody to ever think that we don't ever, you know, that we don't ever have to quote the word and speak healing over our bodies. And we do. I mean, we know you do. Because we do. Amen. What, 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 the reason I'm saying that is when you see this all things... Removing the limits requires honesty. Am I really experiencing all things given to me freely? Now, I, they, they've been given, but am I experiencing it? You know, I'm the kind of person that if I have a gadget, iPad, iPhone, car, I want to know everything it does. I want to know all the bells and whistles, right? I want to know everything. Why? Because I paid however many hundreds of dollars for that. I, I, I didn't buy an iPad just to have an electronic word processor. I want to know what it does. I want to know how to hook it up. I want to know how to make it work. I want all the things that it does operating in my life. Right? In, in my car, I want to know everything it does. If it's got hands-free features, I want to know how to work them. Amen. I want to know what this button does. You'll get in some people's car and go, what does that do? I don't know. It's your car. Why don't you know? Right? You're not, you're not, you are not, that person is not accessing all things. Amen. I, I had to... I was talking to Bob Yandian one time. I had him in my car, and I had picked him up at the hotel, and he was talking to me about my car. He said, you like your car? I said, man, this thing will do everything but scratch your back. And I knew. I knew that's one thing it wouldn't do was scratch your back. But I didn't know what it would do. I want, I want, do you understand why I'm saying this? If you, if you have something and it's accessible, you ought to be using all of it. All things. So see, how is this a limit breaker? You go to God and you say, okay, what of these all things am I not walking in? Amen? Because see, we're digging. I told him in the 2 o'clock service, if you're going to access all things, you got to dig. you got to dig into the Word. A lot of believers only dig when the devil's chasing them. I, I want to dig and find out what does the Word say. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want to have all things. Because, because here's, here's what's important. They've been given freely. There's no reason not to have them. Amen. They, listen, there's, there's no reason 
for your latter years to be years of struggle, scrimping, and just getting by. Amen. There, there's, there's no reason for you to struggle to send your kids to a good school. There's no reason to struggle in, in the areas of your life that God says, I have freely given you all these things. But it becomes a mind, you, you've got to break the limits. Do, do you understand that? Amen. Because, because if I keep thinking that way, that's the way I'm going. You cannot avoid that. The Lord gave me that process years ago. He said, the way you think is the way you'll see, and that's how you're going to be. You can't, that never changes. If you think that way, you're going to see that way, and that's how you're going to be. You can't avoid that. That's the pathway you set yourself on. Amen. And there are limits that people, may, maybe not you, but people that you know. Let's say it that way. Maybe you. You, there are people in here, you have limits that other people superimposed on you whenever it occurred in your life, when you, maybe when you were a child, when you, when you got older, however it was, and those limits will hold you back. Amen. There, 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 listen, there, there are people that believe that you're limited because you're a female. There are people that believe you're limited because you're African American or you believe you're limited because you're a different race. That's only a limit if you'll let it be a limit. Because the Bible says there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but all is Christ. That's a limit breaker. Yeah, but you just don't know how people treat women. L listen, that's not the point. It's not how they treat you, it's how you see you. If you see yourself as not being able to because you're female, then you won't. Because you think that way, you'll see that way, you'll be that way. Well, you don't understand how they treat people of my ethnicity. Okay, that's not the point. The point is how do you see it? Because it's a limit to me. They're limited by their short-sightedness. They can't see past my gender or past my race. Amen. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. I've had people tell me they can't receive from me because I was too, I was too sure of myself. <laughs> what? You mean because I really believe what I'm saying you can't receive from me? No, I want somebody that is sure of themselves telling me what the Word of God says. Limits. The way you think is the way you'll see and that's how you'll be. And self-imposed limits are the hardest limits to break. Because they make sense. Well, I can't do that. Well, why? Well, because fill in the blank. I can't do that. I don't have an education. I can't do that. I wasn't raised with money. I don't know how to handle finances. Nobody ever taught me. Limit, limit, limit. Amen. Do you see that? Well, what do I do? I don't have an education. You break the limit. There's not one scripture in the Bible that says that you can't do something because you don't have an education. It says you can't do it because you won't believe. Did Jesus say, nothing is impossible to him that believeth? Did he? Okay, then take your impossible situation and put it up next to what Jesus said and tell me it's impossible. He said it's not impossible. Oh, but pastor, you don't understand. Does it matter? Does it matter if I don't understand? What did Jesus say? Jesus said nothing will be impossible to the man that believes. Well, pastor, I am believing. Then eventually you'll get to the place where nothing's impossible to you. Amen. Am I helping you so far? All things, that word all things means everything, the whole, the entire, every, everything, the whole, entire, every. So he has given freely, granted generously, everything, the whole of it, the entirety of it, everything. That what? Pertains to life and godliness. 
Amen. All things, everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us by God. Say everything. everything. See, that, that's everything. Everything. Whatever the thing is, everything has been given to us. Now, but pastor, I don't see it. That doesn't change the fact that it's been given. Amen. You know, I've had people come, well, let me share this with you one time. One time, the, uh, 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 there was a couple guys in the, at the Kansas location, they bought me a motorcycle. And uh, it, was, it was a blessing. They bought it for me, blessed me with it. And uh, I rode it for a while. And it wasn't long, the Lord said, I'm going to bring another one into your life. And he said, I want, when, when that happens, I want you to give this one to someone. Well, Larry Price from Clarksville, Faith Builders. He said, I want you to give this to Larry. And he said, and I want you to tell him that when the other one comes, you're going to give him this one. And tell him it's yours already. We're just, you know, we're, I'm waiting to get things together and, and do it. And I told him. Well, he shouted like he was going to take it home that night. He knew he wasn't going to take it home. But he knew it was his. Had that bike been given to him? Well, it had been given. Had he taken possession yet? Not yet. But did he have it? Did it belong to him? He couldn't walk out in his garage and see it, but the word had been given that it belonged to him. The word has been given to you and I that he has freely given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Whether I see it right now completely or not, it doesn't change the fact that it's all been given to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I have done it. I've preached myself happy. I tend to do that. that. He said that pertains to life. That word life, it means living existence. Hallelujah. In, in the New Testament, it means deliverance from the proper penalty of sin. So here's what this means simply. We've been given all things to live this temporal life and our spiritual life. There's not one thing God has not given us. That's the beginning of removing the limits. The beginning of removing the limits is realizing all things have been given to me. And when need tries to talk to you, you remind it. No, 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 no. All things have been given to me. Folks, it goes beyond a positive confession. There are people that have a positive confession, but there's no power behind it. It's just a positive confession. There's no faith power behind it. To have faith power behind it, you got to see it in the Word and be digging for it. See, we're digging tonight. And you see here, all things have been given to you that pertain to life and godliness. So that means you can go home and talk to that bill drawer and tell those bills to be paid because all things have been given to me that pertain to life and godliness. If I need it for my life, it's been given to me. It's been granted to me. It's been secured by covenant blood. It belongs to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, ju I just have to remove the limits. See, you can get satisfied with limits because they actually make you comfortable because there's no pressure to grow. Amen. You know, they did a study one time on some elementary school children. I think they were first, second grade or something like that. And they, they, they had built a new playground behind the school, and they turned them out on that playground, and it was on a, a block of, of land, and they had not put a fence around it yet. And those kids wouldn't venture out very far. They kind of went to some of the, the playground equipment, but they weren't running around. They had all this grass to run around in, and they just all stayed up close. Well, in a few days, they finished the fence. Man, they finished that fence, and those kids were all over the place. Why? Comfort. There's a limit. There's something between them and the car. Something between them and the street. Right? Limits become comfort. Because I'm limited. I don't have to do anymore. I mean, think about how comfortable this would be. Well, why try? I don't have an education. I won't make it anyway. That stops you from trying. What about going and getting an education? 
What about taking classes? Now, I'm not telling you to go back to school. I'm just saying, what about taking classes? That would require breaking limits. You know how long it's been since I've been in school? You're complaining about the education is why you can't make it. You got to lose the limit. Hallelujah. Didn't lose my crowd, did I? Okay. You understand? Amen. I, I, I run into people all the time. They're so limited. They, they just think limited thoughts. You know, G, they looked at Jesus. You know what they said about Jesus? You know what Nathaniel said about Jesus when they came to take him to Jesus? And they said, we found the Messiah, the prophet from Nazareth. And he said, any good thing come out of Nazareth? I mean, that's what they said about Jesus. Right? Amen. I had Pastor Caldwell look at me one time and say, Is any good thing come out of Kansas? <laughs> Here we are. Praise the Lord. Can't put them limits on me. No, he wasn't trying to put a limit on me. He was complimenting me. But the point is, that that's what they said about Jesus. He's the Son of God. Everywhere he went, the religious leaders called him a devil called him the prince of devils, said he cast out devils by the devil, called him an antichrist, a false prophet, everything that you can call someone that's, that's degenerative and mean, they called him that, and Jesus just kept right on going, breaking limits. Why? All things had been given to him. Self-imposed limits. And then we start fashioning our life around those limits. Amen. And then we raise our kids with those limits. Now, I know most of us have raised our kids, but some of us are still raising them. Amen. Even when they're in college, you're still raising them, right? <laughs> Amen. But we'll tell, now, now, don't expect too much. You know, don't, don't expect too much. Now, I know you'd like to go to that school, but I'm just telling you, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. I, if I were you, I'd kind of lower my sights a little bit. I mean, you might have to go to this school and, you know, work a part-time job and, and, you know, and, and it's going to take you two or three times as long to get your degree, but, I mean, you'll get it. Well, you know what? If that's the only option available, I understand that. But why put that limit on them? What did Jesus say? If any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything... Now, do we believe that or not? Because if we believe that anything means anything, he said, if any two of you will agree on earth as touching anything, it'll be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Well, I don't want to get their hopes up. Oh, so you don't believe. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it would just dash their dreams if it didn't come to pass. Well, wait a minute. So the problem here is you don't believe God. <laughs> See, that's why you got to dig. You got to dig into the Word. You dig into the Word until the Word becomes absolute truth to you and you know there's no way for it to fail. No way for it to fail. Oh, my goodness. I'm only on my first line. <laughs> this is the beginning of removing limits. Yeah, but you know, Pastor, where I'm at in my life, there's more for you to do. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been doing this. There's more for you to do. There's no retirement age in the Bible. I and mean, there's no scripture that says, Thou shalt retire and sit under the tree. No, it says when you hit that age, ask for mountains. Amen. Why? Because there, there's more to do. If, if you are at that age where you could retire, we need your wisdom. You've been walking with God a long time. We don't need you to kick up and, and, and drink a sweet tea sitting up under the pine tree. Amen. We, we need you out helping folks grow. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And, and, and if you're young, we need your strength. We need your ability. We need you in here doing the heavy lifting. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't limit yourself. Don't, don't limit yourself. Don't, don't limit your, your ability to do what God's asked you to do. Look at Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. All things. Say out loud, all things. All things. You know, I've known preachers that could preach the paint off the walls. I mean, they could preach, but they were so limited in their thinking. You know, I, I've always refused, and I refuse it here too. I've always refused for, for 20 years in Kansas. I've always refused to talk small or let anybody else talk small around me. Amen. And God, and, and God has done everything that He's done. Because... If you, if, you start, if you start letting people talk small and influence you, I'm talking about these preachers now, and, 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 and they would come to me. Now, I've had, them, I've had them sit in my house and talk to me about these things. Oh, if I could only do what you can do. Well, what's stopping you? I mean, ask, ask yourself that. What's stopping me from doing what I need to do. God's not against you. The Bible says He's for you. Isn't that right? You know what was stopping them? Their limits. Well, I don't have nobody to help me. I didn't either when we started. I didn't either. I have people come to me and say, how'd you start that Bible college? Well, let's see. We just, we just started it. I had a whole leadership that didn't know job from Job. They thought Psalms was Psalms. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm serious. Y'all know Tony Mendez? Been here to preach. He's a good preacher now. Let, 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 me, let me tell you the question I asked him. He was up one time and, and he had been given a subject to minister on and he didn't know it. And I looked at him and I said, do you even read your Bible? Do you, do you, how do you not know that's in the Bible? And he laughs about it then. He didn't laugh about it then. I, I, I asked him, I said, I really said that? I, I, I didn't remember saying it, but I guess I did. But, but they didn't know anything. So my wife and I said, well, we've got to do something. We've got to start a Bible school. We've got to start a discipleship curriculum. So the first year, I did it. I did all the grading. I, I, you know, I don't know if the valedictorian was supposed to be the valedictorian to this day or not. But the point is because I was doing the grading, and math was never my strong suit. And my wife, who's, who math was her strong suit, wouldn't do it. She made me do it. So I don't know if the percentages were right or not, but it, it always made me think, how'd they become the valedictorian? They were the dumbest person in the class. How, how <laughs> maybe, maybe they broke the limits. Oh. But my point is, they'll say, how did you do that? Who helped you? Nobody. We did. God helped us, but we just did it. There's times you just step out and you just do it. You just go do what needs to be done. You step out and you break the limits and you shatter the glass ceiling and you say, I'm going to step out and do this regardless of what I think or anybody else thinks. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now next year will be 18 years. We've had that school 18 years. I'm not saying it's the best school or the worst school, but what I'm saying is I'll have people that'll say, how would you do that? I'd like to do that. Here's what they're saying. Show me how to do it. Do it for me. Put it all together and implement it and bring it to my church and just give me the, the box set. They don't want to break any limits. Well, if you, if you take it and it's not what God told you to do, it'll hurt you. Remember the story I told you about the guy sitting in the back, in the back with me? He had come to my church and preached, and, 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 and we were having some fellowship afterwards, and he kept asking me all these questions about these people that came to our church. How'd you get Charles Capps to come to your church? How'd you get, you know, Paula White, Mark Hankins, all these people? How'd you get them to come to your church? 
And I was, I was eating something, and I, I kind of looked up, put my fork down. I said, <clears throat> simple, I ask. He looked at me like I was lying. I ask. There's no limits there. Why? Here's my mindset. Why should anybody not want to come preach at my church? I have the best church in the city. See, if I don't think that way, nobody else is going to think that way. Amen. I invited Charles Caps to my church, and I had 42 people. And he said no the first time, and then prayed about it, and the Lord told him to come to the church. Man, he came, and we were packed out. I mean, we had overflow, had, had the TV in the back, overflow, and he looked at me in the office and said, I truly know how a sardine feels. Hallelujah. Um, I, there was a funny story there, but I probably shouldn't tell you. I'll tell you. He was, he was sitting in, in, in the office, and uh, we were talking before, and I don't know what possessed this usher. Every church, I think, has a demon-possessed usher. No, I'm joking about that. But uh, this guy was notorious for not having a belt. And you know what happens when you don't have a belt? You getting the idea? And so, Brother Caps is sitting right here. I, and again, I don't know what possessed this guy. He had to get something. It was in a cabinet that was over by him. He's here. Usher comes in. Well, no belt. Shirt went up. Pants went down. Brother Caps was talking to me, and he went, oh, and just, I will never forget that. <laughs> My usher mooned Charles Caps. <laughs> I'm not being common. He just, he did. Oh, Jesus. I was calling things that were not as though right there. Lord, kill him. Just kill that usher. Kill him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but my point is, limits. You got to break the limits. Even when you got ushers that don't wear a belt, you got to break the limits. You just got to get through it. You ask, why, and here's my mindset. Why wouldn't they want to come to my church? Never crossed my mind that they wouldn't want to come to our church. Why wouldn't somebody of renown want to come to our church in Little Rock and preach? The Bible said God would make our name great. Amen? Am I making sense? We want the best. We had the best last weekend. We had the best last weekend. There's no, there's no better than we had last weekend. No better. Nowhere in the world. Amen? You say, that's your opinion. No, that's the truth. And it's my opinion, but my opinion's true in, in that regard. Breaking the limits. Do, do you see what I'm saying? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Phillips translation says, Forgiving us through Christ every possible spiritual benefit as citizens of heaven. Every possible possible spiritual benefit as citizens of heaven. Now I said this at 2 o'clock, but I'm going to repeat it. These blessings are called spiritual blessings, not because they're spiritual in uh, form. They're spiritual blessings because they're blessings of grace that come from the spiritual realm. They come from the spiritual realm. Every blessing in the spiritual realm, notice that he says, has been given to us. And it's God who's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All. See that word again? All. Now you know what all means? All. If I looked in this room and said, okay, tonight I'm taking all y'all out for dinner. Well, I couldn't say I'm taking all y'all except Mary. That wouldn't be all of us. All y'all means all y'all. You know y'all? Means all y'all. 
Amen. That, that, does, that means there's not one person that's not included. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When do I have them? We've been right now, present tense, blessed with every spiritual benefit as citizens of heaven. But I don't see it. It doesn't change the fact that you have been blessed with them. Amen. Amen. Don't limit what this means. Because a lot of people read this and they just see finances. Every spiritual blessing. Don't limit it to that. Whatever blessing that you can find that comes from the spiritual realm, you have been blessed with it. Knowing that we've been given all things for life and godliness and we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings, what does it do? It shatters, it destroys, it completely removes the limits on my life. All things have been given to me. Every spiritual blessing has been given to me. See, now it becomes almost immoral not to walk in them. Because they're available. They're available. Remember the guy that was, that was caught in the flood? He was on the porch. Water was up to the porch. They came by with a boat. So come on, get in. He said, no, I'm, I'm okay. Water rose. He got up on the roof. Came by with another boat. Get in the boat. No, I'm okay. Water kept rising. Got up on the chimney. Came with a helicopter. Come on up. No, I'm okay. The Lord's going to save me. Well, then he drowned. Got to heaven. He looked at Jesus. He said, I thought you were going to save me. What happened? Jesus said, I sent two boats and a helicopter. There are going to be a lot of people that stand before Jesus and he's going to wonder why they live beneath their privileges. When all things have been given that pertain to life and godliness, every spiritual blessing, it's, it's removing the limits. You know, my parents were godly people, still godly people, my heroes. I mean, I love them dearly. But they, they were raised with this mindset and in, in the denomination and the, the group that we were in. And, and, and they would always make this statement, well, it only takes God a second. Well, what they meant by that was, you know, we're going to go through a long downtime and then it's only going to take God a second to bring us out and, and meet the need. But then we'll go back, you know, we might have to go back through these, this struggle. That's a limit. That's a limit. That, that limit was instilled in me. And I had to break that limit because, because you, uh, a limited mindset is you begin to expect to struggle. Now, God will bring you out. It only takes God a second. Woo, hallelujah, glory to God. And we do our woo, you know, and shout. But then, whom? here we go down again. Amen. I mean, it's feast or famine. Hallelujah. That's like burning green wood in, in your fireplace. It's feast or famine, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's either super hot or nothing at all. No, these limits, I've been given all things. See, that shatters it. Now, look at Proverbs 23, verse 7. You know this verse. Am I helping you tonight? We don't have a lot longer to go. But if I get you all out of here at 7 o'clock, You'll just go get something to eat. <laughs> and then you'll expect it next week. And I can't guarantee that. So we'll just shatter the limits. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have a lot longer to go. But Proverbs 23, 7, notice what it says. It says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now that's the first part of that verse. This is simply saying you can't, escape the path that you think on. You just can't. In other words, in the context of this, these verses, this man, he thinketh in his heart, the man, the he here, he's, he's being nice to this guy, he's giving him, uh, you know, nice sweets and cupcakes and, and pies, 
And he's saying, don't, he said, if you're a man given to appetite and you're sitting with this guy, put a knife to your throat. Why? Because as he thinks in his heart, that's how he is. He's being nice, but he don't have your best interest at heart. In other words, he can't escape the path that he thinks on. The way you think is the way you'll see, and that's the way you'll be. You can't escape that. That's, that's why renewing your mind is a constant process. Brother Hagin always said this. He said, your mind doesn't any more stay renewed than your hair stays combed. You got to comb it every day. You got to get up and renew your mind every day. That's why when you feel like that you have reached a place where, where you know it and you know this and you know that, that's a limit and you got to keep renewing your mind. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing changes if my thinking doesn't change. Because you cannot have all things with a no thing mentality. Just can't. You can't have a victorious mentality with a struggle or a, a victorious lifestyle with a struggling mentality. You can't be well thinking sick. You can't be prosperous thinking poverty. Amen. Do you see that? The point is not to try to go get something new to prove that you're prosperous. The point is to change your thinking so that you're no longer mired in a poverty mindset so that God can bring all things to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word of God has to shape our thinking on this matter. The Word of God has to shape our thinking. Well, I'm given, but nothing seems, not, doesn't seem to be working yet. I'm not seeing my harvest yet. Hang, 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 hang on. He's given me all things. He's given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. I can't start thinking, well, I'm given, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm given, but there's no harvest. Now, wait a minute. You're just one step away from saying God lied. Did he say give and it would be given to you? Then that's what's going to happen. Right? He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he said when you, he gives seed to the sower... Minister seed to the sower, bread for your eating, and multiplies your seed sown. That's what he said. So right now you may not see the tangible harvest, but I'll tell you what is happening. Your seed's multiplying in the ground right now. How do I know that? Because it's what the Bible said. So, so very soon you could have a limit-breaking harvest. I mean life-changing harvest. Life-altering harvest. That's what the Lord told me to start thinking. He said, start thinking life-impacting harvest. Not just your need met. I mean life-changing. House is paid off. Amen. See, this is not just about money. It's about mindset. Can I believe and think that God will do that? Or am I still stuck in just meeting my needs? Here. Amen. Now, let's look at Matthew 6. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Matthew 6, 31. Now, what I want to remind you of is we're all in process on this. If you meet anybody that says they've shattered all the limits, they're lying. That's a limit right there. They need to quit lying. <laughs> because all... All of us are believing God. Amen. You know, I like being around people that are believing God for more than me. Because when, 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 when I look at what God's asked us to do, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, and I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord, and then I get around somebody that, that's believing for something that's $10 million, praise God. Mine don't look so big. Amen. But, but that, that shatters limits. I say that shatters limits. In Matthew 6, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, 
What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things. Now, do you see that? All these things. Now, trans, or, or, or back up and meditate on the previous verses. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. These things that the Gentiles are seeking, they pertain to our life. Right? And he said they've all been given to us. Matter of fact, Jesus went on and said, For your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. That's why he gave you all things. Because he knew you were going to need them. He said the Gentiles are seeking after them. We're not seeking after them. They've already been given to us. That's what they seek after. You don't seek after those things. You receive those things that He's already given. Oh, glory. So the Gentiles, those without a covenant, are seeking. The word is desiring to obtain, to desire or require all these things that are mentioned. What we'll eat, what we'll drink, how we'll be clothed, how we'll take care of ourselves. We're told that our mindset is not to be one of anxiousness. But what mindset? This one. My Heavenly Father knows I have need of all these things. Now, then, then here's the question. Do you have a loving Heavenly Father? Do you believe He's a loving Heavenly Father? Then He's not going to let you go without those things. See, but we're digging. And we see this. Okay, okay, Lord, you said in your word. The Gentiles are seeking after all these things, but you know I have need of them. Now, I know if you know I have need of them, you're going to give them to me. Breaks the limits. You know, you can learn a lot from your kids. I've, I've learned a lot from Liliana. She will we'll be on a trip. And when you're, when you're traveling on the road with Lily, here's what you need. You need a, a box of blueberries in the front seat. Or as she says, blue. Blue. And she'll be riding down the road, and all of a sudden, in the back, she's in the car seat, and you'll see a little hand pop out. And you hear this word, peas. Peas. That means, please, give me a blueberry. And you give her a blueberry, she's like, whoop. And then you'll see, whoop, please. <laughs> Amen. She, it never crosses her mind that there's not going to be a blueberry put in her hand. Poppy has the blueberries. And if he has blueberries, I have blueberries. Amen. God, now this is so important. God doesn't have all these things. He's given them all. To us. He's not holding any of them back. He's already given them. It's the process of possession. Am I helping you? We're not being told that God knows and is not doing anything about it. We're told to have an all things mindset instead of an I don't have mindset. Well, I don't have the money for that or I don't have the wisdom for this or I don't have the strength or I don't have the patience or I don't have the... Where do we stop? with an I don't have mindset. If you look at your life, if, you, if a person looks at their life, there's any number of things they don't have. But yet, if I dig into the Word of God, I find all the things I do have. That's already mine. Hallelujah. We're not to seek all these things. We're to receive all these things. He said the Gentiles are seeking after them. We're receiving them. We're receiving them. What's the key? To seek at, to aim, to strive after the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added to you. All of them. All these things. We seek the one thing and receive all things. What would a man's life look like that just solely sought the kingdom of God first?
Amen? And when I make that decision, okay, I'm going after this, the kingdom of God, then I seek the one thing and receive all things. And I'm going to keep reminding you, we're all in process. You might be sitting next to somebody that's broken a large amount of limits in their life. You might be sitting next to somebody that's in the process of breaking the first limit in their life. But regardless, we're all on our way. We haven't arrived, but we're on the train. It's left. Amen. Hallelujah. If your mind is always on what you don't have, you spend your time, and you spend your time trying to obtain things, you're limited. Because there are people right now, tonight, that are working every hour they'll give them trying to get things, and they're limited. Here's why. Because, listen, there's never enough money. There's just never enough. Because, especially the natural-minded person, the more money they get, the more things they get to take up their money. And it's just a vicious cycle. Amen. But, but, but notice now, notice, our mind is on what God has given us. He's given me all these things. My mind is on the kingdom. And that shatters the limits. Because it's only when we enter into this kingdom mindset that we become truly unlimited. I'm seeking the kingdom and all these things will be added. That's what the Lord dealt with me about. When I asked him, I was asking him, Lord, how are we going to do all this that you're asking us to do? And he said, it's simple. You have to increase. And he made it sound so simple. Well, you've got to increase. And then he took me to these verses. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you when you seek first the kingdom. See, the enemy has a lot of believers, oh, Lord, help me with this, who have all of their finances tied up in things. And it limits what they can do for the kingdom. And they're trying to physically get all the things God has said, I'll give them. But when I seek first the kingdom, all the things come to me. So how, how are you going to do all you need to do? Simple, you're going to increase. We're going to dig and increase. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when, when God told us as a body that he has a building for us that's ready to go, turnkey building, it's what he's been telling me and my wife. Now, none of y'all would ever do this. I mean, I'm serious. I don't believe you would. But I've had people look at me like, you really believe that? Yeah, I really do. Why? Because if I have need of it, right? This is good for right now. But God doesn't want us to spend the money that we're spending just to line somebody else's pocket. He, he wants us to have some equity and have something that belongs to us. It belongs to Him, but it's ours. And we're going to have it. You say, when? Well, I've already got it. It's just the process of possession. We've already ordered it. It's just the process of going to pick it up. Well, where is it at? Well, when we take you to see it, you'll know. <laughs> Listen, I, I know I talk about this a lot, but it builds my faith so much. Every time I drive up Napa Valley Drive and I, and I, and I go up to VTN, go up to Agape, and I, can just, I, I, I try to sit back and picture what it looked like before there were any structures on that hill, and I picture Pastor Caldwell sitting on that stump and the Lord saying, go offer them this amount of money for this land. And he went and offered the man the money. And the man almost laughed at him. Said, no, that's not enough money. We don't want to sell the property anyway. And he went back and sat back down on that stump and said, okay, Lord, now what? He said, wait three weeks and go offer him $10,000 less. They said no to the first amount. 
He went back and the man said, okay, how's that work? How do you say no to more money and yes to less money? Because he was dealing with somebody that was seeking first the kingdom. Not wanting to build a church because of him, wanting to build a church because that's what God asked. Amen. Did you see that? that? That builds my faith. Why? Because it's just a matter of time. As we're seeking the kingdom, all the things are added to us. So how are we going to do it? We're going to increase. Just we're, we're going to increase. Hallelujah. Now, Romans 8, 32. This will be my last verse, I think. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. This is a familiar verse. But remember, we're dealing with this subject of all things. All things. Well, we're removing the limits, but we're talking specifically about how all things are a limit breaker. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It's a limit breaker. Because the context is this. In light of what God has already done for us in sending Jesus, there's nothing he won't freely give us now. He's given us the best he had. So there's nothing that, that's too much. Now he's already given Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up. But I, I really, I really, what I want us to do, and, and this is like some, some of the series that I minister. It can be challenging if you're, if you're not careful. I mean, the way you, the way you minister it and the, and the way you receive it. This is not for you to look at everything you don't have. This is not what we're doing. It's for you to look at what limits are there. Why do I think I can't have that? Who told you that? Who said you couldn't? You know, it doesn't even have to be the devil. It can be a self-imposed limit. Amen. Why can't I do that? Why can't you be in the ministry? Why can't God use you? He can if you, if you will break the limits. That's, that's the key. That's the point. Listen, if, if I had a, a dime for every person that told Pastor Michelle and I we were never going to make it in the ministry, I'd be a physically very rich man. Like one guy who was taking a picture with Roy Acuff one time. I don't know if any of y'all remember who Roy Acuff was. Amen. And, and, and he said, Mr. Acuff, don't you wish you had a dollar for every picture that's been taken with you? He said, I do, son. I do. I do. I, I, I have. I, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm okay. But people are quick to tell you what you can't do. Don't be quick to believe them. What did God say? about it. I, I, I said when God first started dealing with us to travel back and forth to, to Little Rock. This was, this was years ago. And I, I, I told one preacher and, and he started telling me how rough it was going to be. Oh, it's going to be hard. Going to be hard on your family. Going to be hard on your marriage. Oh, going to be hard. And you know that's how the devil gets in. And I just, I just, I, I, I come very close to saying shut up. I did say it this way. I said, I got to go. Nothing God asked you to do is going to cost you more than the reward. Just not going to. It's just not going to. God doesn't call you in to do something and it hurt your family and hurt your life. That's not God. God brings you into good things. God brings you into more. God brings you into all things. 
So if he gave us Jesus, there's nothing now that he won't give us. There's nothing he'll hold back because he's already given us the best. See, that's, that means I got to break the limits. I got to break the limits. It's not about where you live, what you drive, what you wear. It's what's the limits. All those things can be reflective of the limits. Now, let, let me say this, and, and I'll try to close. But, but think about this. I remember one time, uh, well, let, let me say it this way. If one time I was preaching at a conference and I was going to be preaching twice and Pastor Michelle said, I want, I want to buy you two new suits because I don't, I don't want, you know, I want you to, well, here's what she said. You are representing me. And so, hallelujah. You know, it's like sometimes if I, I leave the house and one of the kids will go, did mom see what you wore today? <laughs> okay. That means go back home. But any event, no, I do pretty good on my own. But anyway, I, I remember I walked back in uh, with the speaker's room. There was a dear brother there. Oh, he was so anointed, had such wisdom. But he just, I was taking him around town one day in Kansas City. And he and I and another friend of mine were driving to uh, a ministry that he wanted to go to and we pulled up in front of CVS because he he was fighting his allergies and he wanted to get something for them and when we stopped he started talking to me and and I thought he was mad at me at first because he goes you know I know you guys preach prosperity and and you this he said but I have a question for you okay and he said I've talked to the head of our finances and our accounting department and I give just as much as anybody else, and I want you to tell me why I don't have what I need. Wow. <laughs> See, now, I didn't know what I know now about limits. And he was an elder of mine. I mean, how do you look at an elder and go, well, I guess you don't believe, I guess. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, you're asking me here. And, and. He always carried this limited mindset. This, this man was a genius. He, he graduated. He had a Ph.D. in history. I mean, he wrote books. He was an author. I mean, multitude of books. And if you read his books, you're like, my goodness, this is such good information. Such, one, of the, one of my favorite preachers yet to this day. But I remember I walked back in the, in the speaker's room where he was with some other ministers. And I, and I happened to have on a new suit. And uh, he looked at me up and down, and he goes, new suit, huh? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I wish I could look that good in a suit. I wish I could look good in suits. I'd never seen him in a suit. And I remember sitting there talking to him, and the Lord said, his mindset. He, he's never overcome that mindset. It's not about what you wear, where you live, what you drive. It's about the limits. I, I, don't, I don't care if you pull up here in a 1980 Yugo. If that's what you want to drive, that's up to you. Doesn't, mat doesn't matter to me how you dress. That's not the point. Or where you live. The point is to break the limits so I can receive the all things that God wants me to have. If he's given me all things, then I don't want to have a no thing mentality. Amen. Amen. You know, the Lord, the Lord told my wife and I, I was running in uh, one day, and he spoke to me, and he said to me, because I was talking to him about a house. And he said, I have a house for you in Little Rock. And this was, this was when we had first, uh, were planning uh, to move here uh, permanently. And uh, long story short, uh, so I began to, to think about it. And then, of course, I went to my wife and asked her, 
you know what kind of house she was thinking about because you know the Bible says that a wise woman builds her house and uh, so I didn't ever see where he said a wise man builds his house he said a wise woman so there's only one woman in my life so I need to go to her and in any event my point is this you know what the Lord started directing us to do to go through neighborhoods that possess the houses we want not just a house the house what's it doing breaking limits do you see that you can break limits when you start thinking down a certain road amen well, when's it coming? Oh, when, when, well, when it comes, I'll invite you over for a party. <laughs> Amen. We'll have a good time. But the point is, the point is, it's not about the house. It's not about the car, the suit of clothes, the shoes, what you have or don't have. It's why do I not have it? Why do I have the mindset that that doesn't matter? It can be something self-imposed. Amen. Did it help you tonight? Well, Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the manifestation of these limits being broken. Right now, while we're praying, I just, I don't know what anybody may be dealing with or believing for, but I, I really, I want, just look in your heart right now and just ask the Lord, are there, are there limits that I need to break? Not going to call anybody to the front or lay hands on anybody. This is, this is personal between you and him. Because over the next few weeks, we're going to shatter those limits. So, Father, the limits that we may find in our hearts and in our, in our, in our spirits. Lord, I'm just asking you to remove them. Help us remove them. Help us to think bigger. So that we as a body can go on and do the great things that you've called us to do. As we go about taking our city for the gospel. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand up tonight, shall we? Praise the Lord. Well, Wednesday night. We have a very little known minister coming. He's known a few places, Arkansas and Mississippi. No, Brother Jerry will be with us Wednesday night, and we're excited about that. I'm so excited, and, and I'll share this with you, just to share it with you. Uh, you know, we had uh, asked him to come, and uh, uh, he, he's so busy uh, from, I mean, within the first few weeks of the year, he's, he's booked up for the year. When he was here the last time, he had said something to me, and, and, and I'm not obviously at liberty to say all of it, but he, he said this to me. He said, uh, uh, when I was coming to uh, Pastor Caldwell's church, he said, I always made myself available for him. And he said, I want you to know that I'll always make myself available for you. And he had to search for two Wednesdays to be able to come. Because we called his assistant and they, and they said, well, uh, you know, we can't find any dates. But he searched for two free days. And so only on the, we got the last two days. Those are the only two days he had. And he gave them to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? God is so good to us. Amen. Come on, say it with me. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And you and I will always be world changers hallelujah and if you can i would be early wednesday hallelujah healing school